first group and I hear another one coming. So it looks like we're set up just in time. This week on Kentucky Field, it's our best of 2018 show. And we kick things off with an exciting hunt for one of the state's newest game species. Next, it's a rare opportunity in Kentucky, but when it presents itself, ice fishing is hard to beat. I can see him under the ice. For a great time and some great tasting crappie. <laughs> then, one of our most popular videos on YouTube over the past year, a very successful squirrel hunt with a couple of characters, Daryl and Willie. It's all next on Kentucky Field. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> first say Leo. Yeah, we can't get the keeper. Here it goes. Boom! Oh! oh. Hello and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. If you ever heard a bird flying really high in the sky but can't see it, it's probably a sandhill crane and this is the time of year they migrate south. It never fails when you put your decoys out in the morning before it's light and you think you've done a really good job. Daybreak comes and they're too tight. I'll set my perimeter first. That way I know that I'm 60 yards from the blind, 70 yards from the blind. That gives me my outer limit. Then I fill in. It makes it appear bigger from the air, makes it appear that there's more. You get them munched in tight. You know, these birds up in the air, it looks like a really small group, may not be attractive to them. Yeah. And sometimes I'll be out here and I'll end up pulling every one of them up and oh, really? covering up with grass and then hunting. You know, huh. if, if there's too much movement in them, yeah. then you, know, you can't have too much movement. That'll flare them. We usually have a light breeze. They're moving just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they'll move a little bit. And you don't ever want them turning and facing the same direction because that's how they act when they see something that's threatening. Yeah. You know, if they see a coyote walking across the field, they're all going to turn and face that direction. Yeah. Well, from the air, that tells other birds, eh, something's wrong. And they're completely non-alarmed, just feeding, doing their thing. Yeah, and you always want more feeders than you do centuries, just like goose decoys. Yeah. All right, let's go move truck. All right, that sounds good. Well, that's our first group, and I hear another one coming. So it looks like we're set up just in time, huh? Yeah, they roost down on Barron River Lake. And about this time every morning they'll pick up and they usually come off in groups of 10 or 20 to areas that they know they're going to feed you know, most likely areas they fed the day before now when they go back to the roost from the field in the evening they'll pick up in groups of 40 and 50. so here in kentucky when do we typically start seeing them and how long will they be here you'll typically start seeing them come through depending on the weather the end of october all the way through end of february I witness sandhill cranes from a distance a lot, yeah. from a deer stand. I mean, that's the time of oh, year yeah. you really start seeing them and from a boat. Yeah. But to be this close to them, I'm really excited about this. Yeah, and it could happen in a minute or two, or we could be here for a couple hours. It just depends on how they fly. Well, it's beautiful out here, and we're dressed for the cold. So whatever it takes, I'm fine with <laughs> We're good. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. Yeah, no doubt. We've already seen our first group of birds. It could happen any time now. Right. The birds that we're going to be paying attention to are going to be coming from in front of us. Okay. Those are the ones that are going to give us some play right over the blind, and that's what we're after. There's several groups out right now making their way. There have been a few coming over on this right-hand side. It'd be nice if we could get some smaller groups to come through. Right. So once they come in, we got to make sure that they're in range and moving low, right? If they drop down to treetop level out there, they're going to be good. You see these on my side? Yeah. They're low enough if they come over. They're flaring a little bit on us. They're blind to the decoys, but they're coming in close. But right at the very end, they're starting to peel out a little bit to the right and left. There's a few right there. Here we go. 
There's about 15 in there. There's that group in front of us. They're coming over the trees like I want. They're a little bit lower than the last couple, so this may give us a chance here. I'm hearing birds all around us. Here, we got a single right here. Kill it. Here we go. Nice shot. Bird down. Yeah. Good job. First crane ever. <laughs> I love it. It was awesome. All right, so we need to sit down. Get ready. Yeah, get back down because they're liable to come in from anywhere again. I didn't even see that bird. That was great. That is really <laughs> awesome. It's so exciting when those things come through like that. So many birds and all of a sudden they can come from anywhere. They can. They can I mean, you got thousands of birds coming from this way, but so many have made their way behind us and, and they you, kind of just circle and fly around. You don't know. You're expecting them to come from the front, but luckily you saw that one in the back. I hear some behind us right now. We got plenty more chances it looks like. Yeah. Here they come, so I'm loaded up and ready to go again. Yeah. You gotta watch out for now is you're like one more bird. Yeah. So you gotta be really careful. Shooting a single is great, but if these birds come in in 10 or 15s like they have been, you know, be careful on that next shot. I'm gonna make sure that they're not going that fast and I either take that first bird or that the very last the one. one. But there's more coming over the trees right now. They're coming in like I want them, but right at the end, they are starting to flare. I want to pull a few of these decoys and see if that doesn't help. All right. These birds here, they look good right now. This may be it right here. They're going to be a little higher than that last one, so you may have to lead this bird All right. just a little bit. All right. Get ready. They're going to do it. There we go. I've tagged out. <laughs> That is awesome. That is awesome. Your second sandhill crane. Hey, this could not have worked out any better. We got to see so many <laughs> birds. Had two birds fly right over us here. That worked out great. It did, and they're still flying all over. I mean, there, there's birds coming from every direction. Man, I'll tell you what, this was really exciting. I can't tell how much I appreciate you bringing me out here to do this. This was an absolute blast. Oh, I love it. I love sitting here watching as much as I do shooting them myself. And you have put us in a spot where those birds, you knew right where they were going to be and right where they were going to feed. And we just got right in the travel corridor and man, we have seen some birds. We gotta get out there now and tag you, Bernie. Gotta go out there and take a look <laughs> at what we got. So here we go. What a beautiful bird. And this one has what I would call little red on top. Right. An adult bird will have no feathers on its head, and it'll be this red skin all the way to the back of its head. I'm going to mark little or no red. Correct. It's going to ask if it has a leg band. There's no existing bands on this bird, okay. so that's going to be no. No. All right. The next process is when you apply, you get a band, and this gets attached to the leg of the bird. To the leg. All right. But you'll need that number there, the all 2039. Right. 2039. Of course, I'll let you do the honor. All right. When you tag a crane, you come up here above this knuckle right here, and you'll want to wrap it twice, and then lock it in. There you go. Once it's locked, it's locked, right? Once it's locked, it's locked. You'll feel it click when you get it in there. So, Brett, an interesting thing on this Sandhill crane hunting is that you put in for the lottery, and if you're drawn, you're actually sent a link where you go and have to take a test that shows me exactly how these birds look in flight, how they look juvenile, and the reason that is, is for what? There's a concern that hunters will mistake a sandhill crane for a whipping crane or a great blue heron. So the test has questions to make sure that you can identify the difference. There's a lot of shoot, don't shoot questions. You may have a scenario where you can't tell what color a bird is. It's flying in, but you can't tell what color it is. But if you can't tell what color it is, you need to be careful and not shoot that bird because it could be a whooping crane. Wow, look how there's no feathers and look how much red is on the head of this bird. Correct, that would be considered an adult. You'll see on an adult bird that you have a lot more tan in the wing, just a beautiful bird. You know, it is just a stunningly beautiful bird. A lot of people don't know, but these are excellent to eat. Oh, they're great. The nickname for them is they call them ribeye of the sky. 
it doesn't get much better than ribeye. You can grill it, fry it, bake it, you can do whatever you want, but I like to take that breast and go ahead and cut it in strips and then soak those strips for a couple of days in salt water mm -hmm. and get some of that blood out and it makes for much better table fare. Yeah, and look, we've been outside the blind now for a good 30 minutes or so and the birds are still flying in. And this would be a spot if you were gonna hunt tomorrow, you come right back here and have another opportunity. You could, you could come back to the same spot in a day or two. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm excited to get these things on a hot grill, I will tell you that. They're great. In Kentucky, we get very few opportunities to ice fish, but when the ice gets thick enough to go on safely, you might want to find your way to your favorite crappie hole. Eat nice now. Oh, Daniel, we've already got we've already got the required four inches, and it looks like we've still got two or three still inches to, to go. go. Yeah, I think it's going to be safe. I think we can go ahead and get your nephews over, and uh, you can go ahead and start digging some holes and plan on doing some fishing. Sounds good. Let's do it. Hey, we don't get this opportunity in Kentucky too often. We better take advantage. <laughs> yeah, this might be our only chance this year. So, all right, well, let's let's go. There we go. There's one. one hole. Hey, we're getting better at this. Yeah, we're getting better as we go. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been on ice that was this slick. clean and slick. You know, Daniel, I'm a rookie at this, but the little bit of research I've done said the main thing you gotta be aware of is uh, underwater springs. If you, if you know the spring somewhere, you want to avoid that because the water coming through can be warmer. Right. Just because one part of the pond is frozen thick enough doesn't mean it all is. Yeah, yeah. So you really got to watch for weak spots just like a spring or anything like that. Or so, moving water. Yeah, even on moving water or anything. We've had zero temperatures at night and five degrees at night. And that, that's really what it takes. Yeah, it takes a lot, a lot of cold weather, steady cold weather to really freeze that thick. And at four inches, it's darn near like concrete. Yeah. yeah. And that's what they require, they, they say four to five inches is really minimum. Like minimum to, uh, and we got about five, five and a half inches. Think about how many cold days we've had. This is not something that you want to tell someone to go out and, and, and try this on a couple of cold days. There we go. <laughs> oh, he's over on that hole out on the end on of the tree. <laughs> it's a pretty good crappie. It's my first fish through the ice. Got him on a, just a little crappie jig. Over there on the brush, hopefully one of many. There you go. Got him. That's a good crappie. Awesome. Uh oh, here we go. Look at this crappie. Look at that crappie. That's a good crappie right there. Yes, yeah, solid food. Nice job, man. Hey, I'll take those all day long. There you go. Get mine out real quick. Look at there. That's a big one. Nice. Look at that big old nice crappie. Right, there we go. There we go. Look at that. Look how nice these crappie are. Tell you what, I bet crappie out of this cold, cold, cold water would be pretty freaking good in the sky. Here we go. Nice. <laughs> Got another. Hey, that's five nice crappie out of that hole. Five out of this hole in 10, you know, probably 10 or 15 minutes. I can see I could really get into this. Unfortunately, we don't get many opportunities in Kentucky to do this, but hey, you can come out here and do this, or you can sit on the couch. Exactly, yeah. I it's, would rather be out here doing this, and I'll tell you right now, places. when it comes to pan fare, it doesn't get any better than this. Nope. It'll be some good eating right there. Hold on a second. Let me catch this one here real quick. <laughs> That's a good That's a nice crappie. slab right there. That is. As, as you can see, they're, the color is really good. They're nice and thick fish. They're real healthy. So they've got a nice, healthy population of crappie in this lake. So. What have you got there? I can see him under the ice. Look at that crappie. Hey, is that your first ice crappie ever? my first fish on the ice. That is awesome. That's a good one. Hey, you didn't mess around. You went ahead and went big. 
Hands are frozen solid, but it's worth it. <laughs> Was that your dad you were talking to? Yeah. Oh, there, there you go. That's a good one. <laughs> hey, two can play this game. Oh, I got him foul hook. Foul hook. Now that is a lucky catch right there. Yeah. Because that fish missed that thing. Snagged him. It is, I still it counts when you're catching feed. Oh, yeah. I went to set, set the hook and it uh, missed him and got him right there. I'll tell you, this is my first time ice fishing and my absolute all time favorite style of fishing is wintertime fishing for bass. People ask me all the time, when is it too cold to go fishing? <laughs> and I always say, it's when the water gets hard. Well, apparently that's not, not too cold either because if you can get a hole in the ice and catch crappie like this, I guess it doesn't get too cold. This is a lot of fun. Hey, that, Daniel and I dug the first five. <laughs> yeah, they're due. <laughs> this is their first ice fishing trip. They gotta, we gotta break them in right. <laughs> you know what they say, take a kid fishing. Thanks guys. <laughs> take a kid fishing, make them dig holes. <laughs> you guys need help? There's my dad, he finally made it. We got all the holes dug. <laughs> oh, there he is. Come on out here, son. Oh, Big old black crappie. Now, this is the first black crappie we've caught. There's a few in here, real dark color. And just like the rest, you know, 10 to 12 inch crappie, real thick, real healthy. A lot of meat on them. Look at that, that's there a big go. one. <laughs> Everybody caught one now. I can also say, I've not been cold. Yeah. And it's really, really, really cold today. Was it 15 degrees? 15. And we've caught fish. And we've caught fish. You just can't beat this. You know what's really cool too for you is, uh, you got three generations out here today. Yeah, I got uh, my son, two of my grandsons. Yeah, and everybody's caught fish. And everybody's caught fish. <laughs> you know, sometimes in summer you can't get everybody to catch fish. <laughs> That's true. It's hard to get everybody together. Yeah, and, you know, it, it really is. And this time of year, you know, what, what else are you going to do? That's right. Everybody's home watching people catch fish, so we went out and caught fish. <laughs> That's, That's the way you do it, right there. Either I just had a bite or my men are shivering. <laughs> <laughs> I, felt, I felt it just move a little bit. What have you got there? Our first little bass of the day. Got a large mouth. Yeah, nice job. That's a, well, you got about 12 inch bass there. They got to eat too, don't they? Yeah. I'm surprised we haven't caught several more. For our last story of 2018, I want to show you our most viewed YouTube piece, Hunting with Willie. Well, I'm glad to be in Hart County today. Daryl, you and I are getting ready to go hunting with your dog. How did you and I get in contact? Well, you had a call-in show one night, and I just grabbed the phone and called in and said, how would you like to do a squirrel hunting show? <laughs> well, it just so happened that when you called, we were looking for someone that had a good squirrel dog. And I was like, wait a minute, you got a good squirrel dog in Hart County? Let's make this work. So here we are six months later. Willie's ready to go, we're ready to go, and hopefully we'll get some squirrels today. That's what the plan is. All right, well, I think we'll turn him loose and see what happens. Yeah, he's true. Let's go take a look and see what he's got. I'd say he's in that nest. Yeah, I'd say you're probably right. I've had them going nest, had them going whole. That's a good thing about squirrel hunting. You never have to worry about taking them all, even with the dog. <laughs> no. I see he's right around that way. We got another place we'll go to. All right. There he is. He moves right around the edge there. You got a shot right there? Yep. <laughs> there you go, that's perfect. Nice little gray squirrel. Perfect for the pot. He'd go with biscuit and gravy. And I tell you what, if seeing a dog that excited doesn't get you excited about squirrel hunting, he gets me excited just watching him jump from spot to spot and looking up, he's so, so excited. He loves it. <laughs> 
I have come in work and evening, he'd be barking, and I'll look out there, and there'll be a fox squirrel looking over the eave of the barn at him. Here he's like, and he'll wear him out. Hey, get your rifle. <laughs> Go get your rifle. <laughs> Willie. Come on. I got another patch of wood that's bigger than this one over by the house. There's always squirrel there. Okay. Take yours. We've moved just a mile or two down the road. See how long it takes him here. I want to squirrel up a tree right there right now. How far away? That biggest tree in the middle there. I can see his tail. He's all the way at the very, very top. Darryl, you got a good shot at him? Want me to shoot at him? I can just see a little piece of him. He's way up in the top. He moved on me. Here he comes, he's in this tree above us now. Here we go, he stopped right there. There he goes. The dog just grabbed him. I tell you what, that squirrel was way up there and we got about a 15 mile an hour breeze. We had a rough time hitting that squirrel, but we got him and he's on the ground and the dog's got him right now. Let's go get up here. Man, he was way up there in the top of that joker on this windy day. It, it wasn't the first shot, it took us a shot or two, but we got him down. How many do you need to make your biscuits and gravy? Two or three, but one on hard time. <laughs> More gravy and biscuits then. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's two, hopefully we'll get there. There's part of one. Looks like it's been there a while. Been a little late for her. Squirrels is really eat heavy on it. That's a funny looking cow. One I found must have been a doe. <laughs> <laughs> Feather a doe, it would have been a water rigger. <laughs> uh, maybe a moose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. We got one more little hole over here. Maybe we can get one tree in it. All right. Got a honey hole over here, huh? I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, buddy. Come on. Right here, above you. You see him? Yeah. Right here in this tree. There's another one right there. Two of them. All right, I got him right up here, Daryl. Go ahead and take a shot if you get one. Shoot him out. I got that one. Now, that one's coming down. Now come down about eight feet. There's another one. You see that one? All right, hold on. Nice shot. Your little honey hole, you told me there was a little bowl over here that may hold a squirrel. Look, he sure thinks there's another one. Look at there. In the very, very top of this tree here, we got another squirrel. Right up there. That dog is sitting right on it. Let's walk up here and see if we can't get in, uh, in range and get a shot of this one. Another one on the ground. I'll tell you what, your little honey hole just keeps producing squirrels. We're loading up the two that we got here, getting ready to leave. The dog 
would not stop barking up here on this hillside. We were trying to tell him, Dad, Dad. He's looking at us going, no, he's not. There's another one. <laughs> Daryl, it's been an absolute blast. I appreciate you letting us come out here and hunting with you and hunt with Willie. It's been a lot of fun. Yes, sir. Have a safe and happy new year. And start making plans now to spend more time outdoors in 2019. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. <laughs>